Hi everyone, and welcome to another Storytime Saturday. My name's Helena Murray, and I'm here today at the Arboretum at Flagstaff inside our Color Me Happy Container exhibit to read another book, What's Inside a Flower? This book was provided to us by our friends at Brightside Bookshop. Make sure you visit them in store or online to find this book and other great reads. What's Inside a Flower by Rachel Ignatowski. Flowers live everywhere. They bloom in bustling cities, lush jungles, soggy swamps, blistering deserts, and high up on rocky mountaintops. Flowers are found growing on trees, in orchards, on the vines of fruits, in grassy fields, and in fancy gardens. Flowers come in many colors, shapes, and sizes. But how does a flower grow? Why do flowers bloom on plants? What's inside a flower? Science will help us answer those questions. Here I see leaves, petals, a stem, roots, the flower. A flower starts as a seed underground. The seed will begin to grow roots and its first leaves. Above ground and below, bugs, bacteria, and fungi all munch, crunch, and wiggle their way through the dirt. They are called decomposers. Decomposers eat waste like garbage, dead things, and poop. By breaking down waste, decomposers make new soil. Soil is the perfect place for a seed to grow into a flower. With time, the seed will become a much larger plant. The flower's roots spread deep into the ground, keeping the plant sturdy so it can grow tall. Rich soil has water and minerals so a that a plant needs to grow. Rainwater soaks into the soil, traveling down to the roots. The minerals in the soil help the plant grow strong. The root hairs slurp up the water and minerals. A flower stem grows out of the soil. Water and minerals from under the ground travel up through the stem to the rest of the plant. The stem holds up the plant's leaves and flowers high above the ground. Leaves are food for many animals. Look, an aphid is having a snack while a ladybug stalks its tiny prey. Leaves have the special job of absorbing sunshine. Plants turn sunlight into food in a process called photosynthesis. Photosynthesis. During photosynthesis, plants use sunlight and water and carbon dioxide from the air to make sugar, glucose, which plants use as food. Turning sunlight into food is a plant's superpower. During photosynthesis, plants also make fresh air. Carbon dioxide from the air goes in and fresh oxygen comes out. Plants make the oxygen in the air that everyone breathes. Just like people need food to grow big and strong, a flower needs sunshine, water, and minerals to grow. When a flowering plant gets big enough, buds will appear. How cool! Each bud opens little by little until it blooms into a beautiful flower. I see the bud, the petal, the sepal, and the flower. Look inside a flower to see where seeds are made. There's the pistil, pollen, the stamen, petals, sepal, stem, leaf, the stamen make fluffy grains called pollen. The pistil has a sticky stigma and tiny egg cells called ovals. A new seed can only grow when pollen land on a flower's stigma. This is called pollination. 
pollination is between flowers that are the same type. A few types of flowers can make seeds all by themselves. I can self-pollinate. I can make seeds on my own, says the sunflower. Most flowers need pollen from another plant to make seeds. This is called cross-pollination. I need your pollen. We need help to make seeds. Many flowers need help to be pollinated. Some flowers rely on the wind to spread the pollen. Other flowers use animals like the hummingbird and the bumblebees. These animals are called pollinators. Flowers create nectar that many pollinators love to eat. Bees, butterflies, birds, and bats all reach inside the flowers for a tasty treat. The pollen sticks to their bodies, and as the pollinators snack from flower to flower, they spread pollen and help create seeds. Flowers attract pollinators in different ways. Many flowers have colorful petals. They are like neon signs saying, nectar's here. Some flowers have strong smells to attract pollinators. Night blooming flowers smell especially sweet so pollinators can find them in the dark. A flower's petal shape makes feeding easy for local pollinators. Some petals are shaped like a landing pad for bugs while other flowers are perfect for long tongues and beaks. The more pollinators that visit a flower, the more chances there are for seeds to be made. Many plants use seeds to reproduce and spread new plants around the world. Flowers create new seeds through pollination. Pollen lands on a flower stigma and grows a tiny tube to travel down into an ovule, an egg cell. When the pollen grain and ovule join, a brand new seed begins to grow. As the seeds get bigger, the flower begins to change. Petals wilt and fall. As a fruit or pod grows to protect the precious seed, the fruits, husks, and pods that protect seeds come in all different shapes and sizes. Time passes and seeds become ready to be planted. Some seeds will burst out of their pods and grow wherever they fall. Other seeds will need to be eaten by animals and scattered when they poop. Seeds travel near and far. They roll down hills, fly on the wind, and float away in water. Some seeds have wings to help them glide. Some seeds are hard and heavy. There are even seeds with hooks to catch a ride on a passerby. Once a seed finds a spot in the soil, a new plant will grow. A seed germinates, which means it begins to grow. A plant sprouts its first leaves and new roots. Bit by bit, the plant will grow big and strong. A bud is the start of a flower on the, growing on the plant. Now the plant is ready to be pollinated and make new seeds. A new flower will bloom. We have learned how each part of a flower does an important job. Seeds are made inside the flower. The petals help attract pollinators. The leaves absorb sunlight to make food. The stem holds the plant up tall. The roots slurp up water and minerals in the soil. We also learned that flowers do important things for everyone. A flower seed helps spread new plants all over the world. Plants make fresh air. Flowers grow into food for people and animals. Plants do countless other things. What will you plant in your garden? What will you grow? Yummy tomatoes? Sweet smelling lavender? Giant sunflowers? Whatever you plant in your garden will be lovely because you know what's inside a flower and you understand the science that makes flowers special. Happy flowers mean a happy earth for you and me. The end. Thank you for joining me to read this book. I hope you check it up, check it out at Brightside Bookshop. And 
come and visit us here at the Arb to see all the beautiful flowers we have blooming. Thanks so much. Have a great day.